This video will cover the best way to replace the electrical assembly in the Erie's HD76C vibratory feeder. We suggest you watch this video at least once before you attempt to remove the electrical assembly on the HD76C vibratory feeder. The replacement of the assembly should be undertaken in a safe and orderly way. Before we start, please take the time to listen to this introduction. It is critical that all safety precautions are followed when replacing the electrical assembly. This equipment includes one or more extremely powerful magnetic circuits. The magnetic field may be much stronger than the Earth's background field at a distance several times the largest dimension of the equipment. If you use a heart pacemaker or similar device, you must never approach the equipment. To avoid serious pinch type injuries caused by objects attracted to the magnet, keep all steel and iron objects well away from the equipment. Keep credit cards, computer disks, and other magnetic storage devices away from the equipment. Keep electronic devices, such as computers and monitors, away from the equipment. Please contact Eries if you have a question regarding these precautions. The Eries vibratory feeder is designed to be operated from an AC source. It cannot be operated from a DC source. Wiring should conform to all applicable electrical codes. Do not operate the unit with associated equipment touching any part of the unit. All inlet and outlet connections should be flexible and free from restricting the feeder. You should be prepared to apply typical safety procedures and be sure that you wear gloves and safety equipment such as goggles and steel-toed shoes. Be sure that your work area is complete with an overhead crane that is able to handle the weight of the tray and feeder body. Proper overhead crane safety procedures should be followed at all times. You will also need sockets and socket wrenches as well as a torque wrench. Before you remove the electrical assembly, be sure to remove the tray. Once the tray has been removed, set the feeder assembly up for lifting it with the crane. This will help you safely access the electrical assembly. Raise the feeder assembly so you can remove the four rubber shock mounts and place them in a safe area. Insert base bolts in their places to provide the foundation for the assembly. As you use the crane to flip the assembly over, you will gradually replace the base bolts with eye bolts to hold the hooks. Once the assembly has been completely flipped over and the four base bolts replaced, raise the front side so you can place a box underneath it. This will provide stability when removing the electrical assembly. Remove the four bolts holding the electrical assembly in place at the corners and replace them with guide posts for the assembly to travel along as you lift it out. Then add eye bolts. Loosen the air gap adjustment bolts and remove the last two bolts holding the assembly. You can now lift the electrical assembly out of the body using the crane. You may need to manipulate the assembly and use a wedge to safely extract it from the feeder assembly. Once it's out and safely set aside, remove the guide posts. Apply sealant around the cavity where you will be inserting the new electrical assembly. Then replace the guide posts. Using the crane, gently lower the new electrical assembly into the cavity. You may need to pound it with a rubber mallet after removing the eye bolts. Replace the six bolts, but do not completely tighten. A gap gauge should be able to move freely between both gaps. Use the air gap adjustment bolts to move the electrical assembly forward and backward until both gaps allow the gauge to move freely. Once this is done, torque the six bolts to 102 newton meters or 78 foot pounds. Tighten the air gap adjustment bolts. 
Flip the unit over and lift it to reinsert the shock mounts. Lower the unit and remove the sidebars or eye bolts used for lifting. Apply anti-seize lubricant to the holes in the spring bars. Using the crane, lower the tray onto the unit, lining the holes up with those on the spring bars. Insert the tray mounting bolts where these holes line up and torque them to 102 newton meters or 78 foot pounds. When installing the tray, you may need to loosen the spring bolts to allow the front and rear spring bars to align to the tray mounting holes. If so, remember to re-torque them to 319 newton meters or 235 foot pounds. Check the air gap once more after the tray is installed. The black wires from each power cord should be connected together to the line side of the input voltage and the white wires should be connected together to the neutral side. Connect the green wire to the ground or to the lug provided in the control box. Make sure all the fasteners in the assembly are tight at all times. Periodic checks for tightness should be made to ensure against possible malfunction or damage due to loose parts. The spring and armature bolts should be torqued to 319 newton meters or 235 foot pounds, while the electrical assembly and tray mounting bolts should be torqued to 102 newton meters or 78 foot pounds. No other routine maintenance or lubrication is required with the HD76C, except that any accumulation of foreign matter should be periodically removed from between the tray assembly and the body, and from between the body and the mounting surface to prevent restriction of movement of the vibratory elements. Also, any buildup on the feeder tray itself should be removed, as this will affect the tray deflection. An important note about special trays and attachments. Erie's engineering service should always be consulted before undertaking the design or construction of special trays. Neither standard nor special trays, as furnished by Erie's, should be modified or attachments made without first contacting us. Failure to do so will void the warranty and affect the performance of the feeder. Thank you for your time. We hope this video has helped you replace the electrical assembly in an Erie's HD76C vibratory feeder and provided good direction about preventative maintenance. Please check out other Erie's videos on our YouTube channel or contact us at the telephone number shown on the screen.